In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the assumptions made when fitting a logistic regression model. So to do so, first what I'm going to do is recap the assumptions made when fitting a linear regression model, and then we're going to see that the assumptions for logistic are very similar with some slight changes because our outcome is a yes-no variable instead of numeric. Okay, but the assumptions made through regression models in general are always pretty similar with slight changes depending on the exact structure of the data. So in a linear regression model, we assume that there was a linear relationship between x and y. Right? So that a line can represent the relationship between x and y. We assume that the y values are independent, or sometimes this is stated as the errors are independent. So the outcome for person 1, person 2, person 3, and so on, they're not related. They're all independent of each other. We assume normality of y given x, or normality of the errors. So that observations are normally distributed around the regression line. And equal or constant variance, or the technical word is homoscedasticity, that the variability around the line is approximately the same everywhere. So logistic regression has a very similar set of assumptions, except things change a little bit. And part of that has to do with the fact that our y variable is a 0, 1, a yes or no. Right, so recall, if you made a scatter plot of the data, it would look something like this. Right? For, I've drawn x being numeric here. And the y values take on, um, y takes on values of 0 or 1. We fix some sort of logistic shaped curve here. And if you look and think for any one of these particular observations, right, here's the, let's just go on this here. Here's the observed value, or here's the observed value, right? We observe values of 0 or 1. So the errors take on one of two possible values. If the person had 0, and here's what our model predicts for them, you can see that the error right, is the observed minus the predicted. For this one here, the error is going to be 0 minus p, which equals negative p. If, for that person, they took in a value of 1, if the outcome happened, the error it's going to be, again, the observed minus the predicted value, 1 minus p. Okay, so errors always take on one of two values. Right? The observed value is either 1 and above the line or 0 and below the line. So the errors take on p or, sorry, 1 minus p or negative p. So the errors, <coughs> I'll write that down in a second, or maybe I should write it um, down here. The Fourth assumption for logistic regression, um, or maybe it's right here, third and fourth. Rather than observations being normally distributed around the line, right, observations, so the y's or the errors, are binomial. We've already seen this a little bit as we introduced logistic regression, where we saw how it connects to the binomial. The binomial is the underlying probability distribution for logistic regression. All right, so y values are binomial, right, meaning the, the outcome happens or it doesn't. They take on values of 0 or 1. Something occurs or it doesn't occur. Or we think of the errors as being binomial. The errors are either 1 minus p or minus p. <coughs> um, we don't assume constant variance. If you remember, um, and this is reaching back a little bit, but for a binomial, the, the standard deviation is the square root of NP1 minus P. Don't need to worry too much about the exact um, formula, but what I want to draw your attention to is the variability is a function of P. So, Variability is highest when we're around a P of 50%. Variability gets smallest when we get towards probabilities close to 100 or 0%. Okay, but again, so the, um, the error, okay, or the variance is not constant, it follows a binomial. What I want to say about both of these, we don't need to worry about checking these. These are assumed or in some sense, they're true based on the structure of the data. Right? So if we're looking at um, 
out comes of do you have a disease, yes or no? Or the data set we've been looking at, is a baby low birth weight, yes or no? It's not a question of, like it is in linear regression, is the data normally distributed? Here, the data is binomial distributed, right? The baby is low birth weight or they're not. Someone does have a disease or they don't. Okay, so kind of following a binomial distribution and knowing the variability, which is related to the binomial, these are assumptions we don't need to worry about checking. The um, second assumption that gets made is the same. So we have independent y values. So person one having the disease doesn't make person two any more or less likely to have the disease. Right? The outcome is independent for all the individuals. And again, this is checked using the study design. So there's not a statistical test for are the y values independent or not. This would require knowledge of how was the data collected. Right? If one baby being born low birth weight, does that make other ones in our sample more likely to be low birth weight or not? That's a question of the study design and how the data was collected. And then the first assumption is pretty much the same again, but rather than assuming there's a linear relationship between the numeric X variables and Y, we assume that there's a linear relationship between, and I'm going to say the numeric X's and the log odds. the outcome occurring, right? or ln of p over 1 minus p. Right. So again, that's the same assumption. If you remember, in linear regression, we're modeling the mean of y given x as b0 plus b1 x1, and so on. So we assume that any of the x's that are numeric are linearly related to the left-hand side of the equation, the mean y or Sometimes we could write this as just the predicted y for the individual. In logistic regression, we're modeling the log of the odds as a linear function of the x's. And so again, we're making the same assumption that for any x's that are numeric, the relationship between x and the log odds is linear. So this assumption here, linearity, is the only assumption we really need to check. Right? These other assumptions, well, I guess we need to check independence, but that's not a statistical um, way of checking it. It's knowledge of study design. Assumptions three and four are sort of implied. Right? When we're working with logistic regression, we're working with an outcome that occurs or doesn't occur. Um, so we're working with binomial data. So linear linearity, is an assumption that needs to be checked. We also talked about, um, same with linear regression, the linear assumption is the most important assumption for us. If the relationship between the x's and the y, or in this case the log odds, is not linear, that's gonna be a problem whether it's a predictive model or an effect size model. So what we're gonna do in the next video is talk about how we can check linearity. I'm gonna talk both conceptually on a whiteboard explaining how we can go about doing that, and we'll also look at implementing it in R. For our data set, we're gonna choose one of the variables and we're gonna check linearity for that particular variable. I just wanna make a note here. I'll probably say this a few times. If, if the linearity assumption is not met, the way that we can address it is the same as it was when working with linear regression. So if some variable is not linearly related, we might try working with the log of that variable. Right? Or we might include x2 and x2 squared, but fit polynomials. Or we might categorize that other variable, or so on. So the solutions we saw for addressing nonlinearity completely apply here to logistic regression. So let's get to talking about how we can check linearity in logistic regression. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.